Alrighty, folks. So we'll have a we'll have a little chat here. Let me set my controller down. Oh man, I'm out of chocolate milk. Oh well. As I scrape my headset mic across my other mic. Whoops. Oh well, you'll live. So yeah, heavy rain. Uh, it's a good game. I think it's a good game. I it it plays around with concepts that no other games are really confident enough to play around with. I mean, it it basically tries to be a uh, a movie without uh really worrying too much about having all kinds of core gameplay. Now, of course, there are people that believe that, well, if a game isn't fun at all times, then it must be bad. Uh, I disagree with that. It's not necessarily that. It's just that it depends on what you want to get into. And if you just if you just want a cool fucking story that is interactive, well, then you have this kind of game and art games and etc. Um, there is an argument to be made about whether or not it's even a game at that point. But uh, I think this still qualifies. It's just a different kind of game. It's a completely different species. And it's okay if you're not into that. That's fine. That's that's your prerogative. You don't have to be into it. Um, at the same time, I think it's pretty clear, and I think I made it pretty obvious, that the quick time events in this game suffer from the same issue that uh, all quick time events suffer from. And that's essentially that, well... In a really harried, emotionally difficult, you know, adrenaline pulsing uh, scene where you have to hit precise buttons and the controller or the game itself don't cooperate with you, it can be incredibly frustrating because it's not like a, a uh, it's not like Halo, you know, I failed to shoot the alien in the head so he shot me. You know, there I had control. It's not Dark Souls where, you know, I rolled at the wrong time, so I fell off a ledge. In these situations, you don't really feel like you have control over anything, and you get incredibly disconnected from the game when the game is trying to be immersive. So it fails to be immersive. And in a game that's doing nothing but being immersive, that's a real problem, you know? Um, so, yeah, the quick time events probably needed even more polishing than they got. Uh, than they received. It's understandable that, of course, they didn't because that's not what the game was really focusing on overall. Uh, the characters steer like crap. I think I demonstrated that n on numerous occasions where I'm just trying to get them to go the right direction. And that's an, an old thing. You know, you look at Super Mario 64 or something, your character is always in the center of the screen. You look at Dark Souls, your character is in the center of the fucking screen. He does not move. And it makes it easy to control what you're doing and to have full mastery over what you're doing. But because these characters are captured with these mocap things where they have to move at a certain speed or it'll break your immersion, um, it does the opposite again. Because they're trying to keep your immersion by making the characters move at a certain speed and trying to keep your immersion by changing your camera angles, you end up constantly shooting around shit like you're steering a fucking tank. And it does the opposite. It breaks your immersion by trying to create immersion. No bueno. No bueno. But that said, again, the game is not focusing on those things. So if you can get past it to enjoy what the game is doing well, which is a compelling story, then, well, you get past it. Um, all of the characters are, are nicely written. They're, they're interesting enough to keep you going. Uh, Madison is one of the weakest, I think. Madison is one of the weakest. I think all of the characters needed some, some prequels and such to really flesh them out. And there were supposed to be prequels. There were supposed to be Heavy Rain Chronicles, but it was put on hiatus indefinitely, uh, perhaps to give the developers time to work on something else. I mean, they did work on Detroit Become Human for quite some time, and of course, the studio itself came under allegation for extreme sexual harassment and abuse to their employment employees, so maybe they were dealing with shitty management. Who knows, right? And no one knows why a game gets caught in development hell except the developers, or unless there's a really good article about it. Uh, some r good investigative work. You know, a la Anthem, for example. 
But as I said, I mean, the game does, it, it sets out to achieve a good story, uh, a, a movie-like feel, and a, a good artistic palette, uh, solid characters, and it, it achieves all of that very, very well. It's just, are those things enough to hold you as a player? For me, yeah. It depends on the story. I mean, with the, it has to be kind of dark like this for me to even consider it, I guess. Like, I, I can't imagine another kind of story that would actually hold me. Like the sort of murder mystery thing, it works. You know, Norman Jaden's sections where he's doing all this cool investigative shit. Uh, the concepts in there are cool. You have your private eye detective, old school private eye detective with all his noir shit. You have your high tech detective and Norman Jaden. You have your father going through Saul. And you have Madison who, um, yeah, she, she, she does crazy shit and helps Ethan for some reason until it's revealed that it's because she's a reporter. So, yeah, the characters were cool, and it makes you want to actually maybe see how they turn out. Uh, there are a number of endings for every single character. Scott Shelby has three, Norman Jaden has four, Madison has three, and Ethan has seven. Uh, I guess mostly depending on how Sean ends up and how Madison ends up, you know. Depend every single character changes Ethan's ending, basically. Whether or not he saves Sean is, you know, polar in each one. So Norman's arguable best ending is it actually only happens if he lives but fails to make it to the warehouse. Only if he fails the case will he have his quote-unquote best ending. That's why it's debatable. If he fails the case, like say he gives up or he accuses Blake, both of those count as failures. And what will happen is he actually resigns from the FBI. He resigns from the FBI. Uh, and, and actually, it's not like he's fired or pushed out or anything. Basically, you hear someone tell him, like, hey, like you have a promising future here. You can still... You can keep Ari and everything. And Norman's like, no, Ari's too tempting. I'm done. He leaves. He gets to live a normal life. Okay. The ending we got with him is, of course, he, he ends up... Uh, you know, succeeding. He ends up nationally recognized, uh, extremely successful, still with the FBI, but there's signs that he actually does have some sort of mental damage. Now, the reason why that could be the best ending is because we don't, it's ambiguous. You know, clearly he has some damage. That doesn't mean that he's fucked forever. I'm sure he has great resources at his disposal. Like, I'm sure if he goes to the FBI at that point, they'll help out their star child, right? I, I don't think the FBI would want him to go to the public. Hey, the tools I used to help me in the case fucked my brain. You know, I, I don't think... I think there's at least a chance. It's it's bittersweet. It's, it's ambiguous. He, he may be fine in a year. He may have to just take some time off. He may be okay. But, you know, that's not the tone the game leaves us off on. The tone the game leaves us off on is, holy shit, he's fucked. You know? So, uh, you know, it's hard to say, right? With that one. Uh, for, for Madison, of course, she has an, a, a number of endings as well, depending on whether or not she can make it to the warehouse, depending on whether she dies. Um, if Madison makes it and Norman doesn't, Madison each character can actually kill Scott depending on like if they make it uh, Ethan can apparently end up in the same situation Norman did and end up shooting Scott on the crane too uh, Madison can end up running away from Scott and I think eventually kill him as well uh, you know everyone can get there and I think Sean can still die it's just all it just depends like I don't know maybe even maybe Ethan can fail his quick time events and Sean dies I don't know as I said, there's a number of endings. Uh, you can look them up in a wiki and, and see them in general. I'm not going to run through every single ending. There's just so many. And this ending took me an hour to put together. And then I'm going to have to go and edit it in post, which will take me another 20, 30 minutes, and then like two hours of rendering. So, you know, <laughs> I'm not willing to do all of that. But, I, I, you know, I gave you guys ba essentially eight different endings. <laughs> So, a good half of them. I, I'm, I'm curious to see if y'all saw Scott coming. If y'all saw Scott Shelby coming. The clues are definitely there. 
The clues are absolutely there for you. They're absolutely in plain sight. You know, oh, hey, he used a typewriter. Typewriter's in the shot. Hmm. You know, Scott is a kid. He's wearing a big brown coat still. Hmm. It's very similar, too. Uh, all of the, all of the, you know, suspect things that Norman comes up, they all match Scott. You know, every single one of those matches Scott, and you're like, hmm, he was an ex-cop, hmm. <laughs> you know, all of those things. It's it's definitely available to you, but the game definitely throws you some curveballs where even Ethan himself thinks he's the killer, you know? I don't know how, how Ethan ends up with origami. I, I guess Scott Shelby's fucking with him. Maybe, maybe Scott's like... Maybe, maybe that's Scott building an early alibi for the situation. You know, maybe he thinks that Ethan's going to win. And so, maybe by d somehow enacting the blackouts, he's trying to get Ethan to turn himself in after saving Sean if he succeeds? I don't know. Scott builds himself a number of alibis. You know, he's very good at covering his tracks. He does so successfully. The only track he really fails to cover is Lauren. You know, that's why he tries to kick her out. And of course, one changed ending for Scott is you can let Lauren die in the car. It doesn't change Scott's, uh, you know, anything with Scott, except for that he gets to walk away free at the end. Lauren's not there to kill him. You can absolutely let her die. And we almost did, actually, because I almost forgot to untie her. <laughs> But yeah, I think that's about all I have to say on the game. Uh, I'm probably not going to replay it again. I I think I've seen enough endings for now. <laughs> and I enjoyed it. As, as I've said, it was frustrating at points. The, the quick time events just get irritating after a while. Especially when you do a long session like I did. Uh, I started this session at, what, 11.30 something? Maybe 11? And it's 4.23 a.m., so I've been going for quite a, quite a while now. Uh, so once you start getting tired and your patience runs thin... Uh, so if you want to play this game yourself, I recommend, I recommend wait until it comes out on Steam. Uh, it's going to come out on Steam in about a year. And, you know, save your money and save your time. Don't give it to Epic. They don't deserve it. I don't like this exclusive crap. But, considering the game was formative in my teen years for how games can be done with just a story and almost no gameplay, considering how much I enjoyed it, I was like, ah, I'll kick Epic five bucks, I guess. Ugh. As I throw up in my mouth a little. <laughs> but, I hope you guys enjoyed the series. I did. Uh, it's been fun. Now I gotta get on to my other series. Alright, I'll see you guys on the next one. Signing off.